In this video, I'll be covering how to create a running total in Power Query. Now, if you're doing a simple running total in Excel, it's really easy using the sum function or just adding it all together. But if you're in Power Query and it's part of a series of other steps, unfortunately, there is no command to simply do this. But there are some M code functions that you can use to do it, and it's not too hard. Hopefully, Microsoft will realize that this is something that might need to be done in Power Query. Hello, Microsoft, are you listening? But since it's not there, let's get into how we can do this. So if you've done running totals in Excel, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, what we can do is I can just type equals this, that's the start of it, and then I could do equals this plus the previous amount, and you click the fill handle to copy that formula down and you've got your running total. Another way to make it easier is select within my range here, control T, turn this in table, my table does have headers, and I'll just take equal sum, and then that first value, colon, it again, but make that a relative, or an absolute cell reference in the first part of it, use the function F, F4 key, make sure the dollar signs are in front of that, Press Control Enter to stay in there. And you can see that since it's a table, it copied that formula down and it gave me my running total. But this is about Power Query. And how do we do it in Power Query? Well, it's not as intuitive, but it's pretty simple. I'll bring this into Power Query. Go to Data from Table and Range. Excel recognizes that we need to turn this into a table. Click OK. The Power Query editor will open. And what we need to do is we need to add an index table. So in Power Query, we're going to utilize two functions, the, the list function. And the first one is going to be a list.firstn. And what it does is it's going to take a list and then it's going to bring back those initial values based on that count. Whatever count is indicated in the second argument is it, that count of that list. And then we're going to use another function called list.sum to sum up that list. So let's see how it works. So I'm back here in the Power Query editor. And in order to have a count, I need to have something where a, a column where it counts the numbers or it counts the rows. So I'm going to put a counting row, an index column here, start from one. So in a way, this is the first record, that's the second record, that's the third record. Right? And now I got to add a custom column where I'm going to incorporate those two list functions. So I will put in list dot first, and it's going to be this one. And look at, oh, I, I need, don't need that two list at the same time. Open parentheses. And you would think that I just would need to put in the sales because basically I want to count the sales and then based off of this index, right? So let me put that in and you see what happens. It, it, look, it, look like, it looks like it's fine. Click OK. It's going to give me an error because it says it can't convert the value, this to a value because this really is not a list. It's a record. So you need to go back in here, click on my gear icon, go back in here, in here. And what we need to do is we just need to reference the previous step. And we can reference the previous step by using the hash. And since it's two words with a space, I have to put in quotes, add it, index, close quotes. And what happens is with these brackets, it indicates that it's a column in there. It's going to bring it back as a list. So I click OK. That error disappears. If I click on the blank value here, you can see it shows the first value because that's number one. Now there's going to be a list of two values here. There's going to be a list of three values here. Now I can take this and I can wrap it in that other function to sum up all these values. So let me go back into that custom function there. And in here, I'm going to use that list.sum function and just wrap it in parentheses. Wrap this all in parentheses. No errors. Click OK. And now it's added it. 10,000 plus another 10,000, 20,000. And it's done it. So here I can just call this running total. And I don't need this anymore. Click on that, press delete, click home, close and load. It's gonna open up and up, bring it into another sheet. And now I have my function. Unfortunately, it did not give me my month as a date. So I just go to home and I'll turn that into a date here. And now we have our running total. As you can see, just using the M list functions is all that's needed to create a running total in Power Query. If you're just creating simple running totals, just do it in Excel with a sum function. But if it's a series of part of your other steps in Power Query, these list functions are gonna be so helpful. And if you're sharing these files with others, you're hiding the sausage making from the other folks that need these files. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end.